cradle of humanity is where the first African producer of honey appeared. On the high plateau of Ethiopia, the small peasants, apart from their flocks, often also keep bees. For example, there's Bossi, a peasant aged 47. She inherited her love of bees from her father. She hand makes her beehives using a century old technique. She's also taught beekeeping to her husband, Tades. He's normally more at home looking after his herd. The hive is built up in layers, leaving time for each to be quite dry until it reaches a height of four feet. They have 20 hives set up behind their little farm. Like over half of Ethiopians, Tades and Bossi are Orthodox Christians. Very religious, they go at least once a week to one of the numerous churches in Lalibela. In the 11th century, King Lalibela made this town into the capital. He had these monolithic churches carved out of the mountain. Lalibela's history is intimately linked with honey. In Amharic, the language of Ethiopia, Lalibela means the town of the honey eaters. All the pilgrims of the region are familiar with the legend of Bilbila Georgis, a little troglodyte chapel. The church is said to shelter some sacred bees. After the service, the priests like to act as guides. To discover its hidden treasures, you have to walk through several passages dug out of the mountain until you reach this crypt. One thousand six hundred years have gone by, and the bees are still there. Hidden, sixteen feet up. Innen malak.
There are three swarms in the church of Bibilla Georgis. Nan what you don't was a venya hono, man may be the Christian Zarak in Ashvarvari Bimata, Yenet Gofria Sotota, Bazugizi, Betalia Yemukiniat, but were not Mukiniat and Quazarafa, Siakahedu, but Alian Gizim, sit a big and a burrow, Peter Christiano, Ihin, the Menaoma, let him know what you nacho, Kazavan in the Tacho, Ben of Zavan in the Timit and Beko Mibalo, Belvala Yurgisimiano. The honey from these sacred bees is collected once a year. It's said to have miraculous powers. It can cure the sick. The faithful come from all over the region to ask for the precious medicine. In Lalibella, the heavenly nectar is not just sacred. It also flows in more profane surroundings. In the town's bars, everyone quenches their thirst with tej, the local name for mead. This yellow alcoholic drink is made from water and honey. This is honey wine, but it's tasty. It's like, you know, it tastes like sugar and sweets. It's a beautiful traditional drink, which is in fact historically associated with panacea for the kings. For the elite, it used to be like that. Now we're drinking and enjoying it. The degree of alcohol varies from one flask to another, from 5 to 15 degrees, depending on the fermentation. Lalibella is also known for its honey market. Every Saturday morning, the small peasant beekeepers go to the capital to sell their harvests. Here, the unit of measurement is the goblet. Tadas and Bossi have walked for four hours from this farm with their three gourds of honey. They're reputed to have one of the best quality nectars in the market. <laughs> <laughs> Tadas and Bossi managed to sell all the honey, 10 kilos, which will bring them about $100, a small fortune. And On the high plateau of Ethiopia, the rains are becoming more and more scarce. The ever longer dry seasons are starving the small peasant farmers. Tadas and Bossi rent this little patch of dry land on the hillside, 
which lies two hours' walk from their farm. It's harvest time for teff and sorghum, the native cereals which are the staples of the Ethiopian diet. The youngest of their seven children have been put to work, even though their main task is to watch out for the herd. The flowers haven't been spared by the climate. If they look hard, the bees always find some nectar to bring back to the hive. The harvest is done at night. Bossy prepares the smoker to keep the bees away. All you need is a little dry cow dung. In Ethiopia, they say to cut the honey when you harvest it. When they open their hives, Tides and Bossi never know whether they'll find any honey. The repeated droughts have meant that each year they have fewer bees in their swarms.